Sam Raimi is the GOAT when it comes to portraying Spider-Man on the big screen. I mean, he's delivered some of Spidey's greatest cinematic moments. From Peter Parker using his powers for the first time, to the now iconic train scene between Spidey and Doc Ock. Raimi not only understands the strengths and flaws of the title character, but also how to convey the story in the most engaging way possible. However, in this video essay, I want to rewind the clock to where it all began for Spidey, that being 2002's Spider-Man. So without further ado, let's get into why I consider Spider-Man to be a superhero classic. Spider-Man holds a very special place in my life. The 90s animated series was my first introduction to the character, and since then, I've never looked back in terms of my love for Spidey. So when the first Spider-Man movie released in 2002, you can understand why I was excited to see how Sam Raimi was going to depict the webhead on the big screen. And boy does he deliver, with a movie that not only understands the essence of Peter Parker and Spider-Man, but is legitimately a great movie in its own right. Right from the opening scene, Sam Raimi and writer David Kipp do a great job in giving Peter an underdog quality as we see him running to catch the school bus. <laughs> Stop the bus! <laughs> That's me. Hey, tell him to stop, please. You immediately feel sorry for Peter, as he just can't seem to catch a break in life. Whether that's constantly being picked on by Flash Thompson, or not being able to speak to the girl of his dreams, Mary Jane Watson. Peter is a character that has everything go against him, despite his intelligence and care for others. And this underdog quality permeates through all of the major characters. From Norman Osborn being unable to land a military contract, to MJ having domestic issues and career struggles. By beating down these people at every imaginable moment ensured that I was invested with these characters. The whole cast bring their A-game to this movie. Starting with Tobey Maguire as the title character, he plays a believable social outsider in Peter, as well as capturing the joy that one would feel if they were given these superhuman abilities. The character arc that Peter goes through is wonderfully told by Raimi and Kip. They do a top job of making you care for Peter's everyday struggles. It means that when he does don the famous costume, I became fully invested in his journey as a superhero. Willem Dafoe plays the Green Goblin as his excellent depiction of the character, from the sinister voice to his theatrical evil laughter, are all qualities that fanboys would only have dreamed of for a live action Spidey movie. I started this company. You know how much I sacrificed? The rest of the cast all do a good job in their roles. James Franco, Cliff Robertson, and Rosemary Harris wonderfully convey the tone and feel of their comic book counterparts. Sam Raimi's unique visual style is one that never gets old and only makes the movie unique in its tone. It also separates the movie from the dark superhero movies that we tend to get nowadays. His sense of humour permeates throughout the movie, such as when Peter learns of his new powers for the first time in school. It's moments like these that keeps the movie fun and it's very much fitting with the history of the character. That's not to say the movie is devoid of any emotion, with the big emotional moment being the death of Uncle Ben. Importantly, Sam Raimi never rushes to this pivotal scene. I love how Raimi plays out Peter and Uncle Ben's last conversation more like a Shakespearean tragedy than a loving encounter between two relatives. Something's different. I'll figure it out. Stop lecturing me, please. I don't mean to lecture and I don't mean to preach. And I know I'm not your father. Then stop pretending to be. Peter's angry outburst towards his uncle provides great setup for the guilt that Peter has once he sees his uncle laying on the street after being shot. For a superhero movie that was released in the early 2000s, the CG holds up well by today's standards. It was a delight to see Spider-Man climbing and swinging through the urban jungle of Manhattan as Raimi keeps the action exciting and tense. The standout set piece is the final encounter between Spidey and the Green Goblin. It luckily doesn't resort to a CG city destroying battle that so many superhero movies fall into, but rather becomes a personal confrontation between these characters. The way Raimi directs the scene has such a visceral quality as you never get the sense that Spidey is going to win this fight in one piece. It essentially becomes a brutal boxing match between a heavyweight fighter 
and a newcomer who is out of his depth. The fight feels gritty, as I can recall genuinely being scared as a younger lad at the punishment that Spidey encountered from the goblin. Danny Elfman's score is one of the best soundtracks in the superhero genre. Elfman's score complements the light tone of the story and serves as a benchmark for how to score a superhero movie. Spider-Man is a movie that stands the test of time with an excellent depiction not only of the title character but for all of the main characters as I was able to care for their individual struggles. Sam Raimi's unique visual style and comedic tone was a match made in heaven with Spider-Man. The story has a lot of emotion as I genuinely cared in Peter's journey towards adulthood and its transition towards greater responsibility as Spider-Man. The movie has first rate action that is exciting and brutal, especially the finale between Spidey and Green Goblin. There are solid performances from the rest of the cast who convey the essence of their comic book counterparts. The brilliance of the movie is all capped off with a wonderful score from Danny Elfman that captures the spirit and essence of Spider-Man. So it's now that time where I hand it over to you as I wanna find out your thoughts on Spider-Man and do you think it's one of the best superhero movies of all time? as I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.